Welcome to the online Halo teacher training. We're really delighted to have you all here with us today um, to learn how to teach Halo in your classrooms. Um, I'll go ahead and get started by introducing our team. Um, so I in the picture on the right. My name is Tiara Langley. I'm the Halo program coordinator here at Cinch. Um, and then I'll let Sarah have a moment to introduce herself. Hi everyone, just saying hello briefly. I'm the, the HALO program director. I'm a faculty member at Eastern Virginia Medical School and the uh, CINCH or Consortium for Infant and Child Health Assistant Director. So I've been really grateful to be involved in this program for the last three years and um, TR will mention, but, but we have funding to continue the program uh, for the next three years. So I love this work um, and I'm just excited to, to be able to continue doing it. And thank you all so much for joining us today, um, TR and I. I realize our sort of scheduling snafu and we appreciate you you bearing with us on that so thank you oh yeah thank you all so much um and this will be sort of a two-part training the first 30 minutes or so we'll learn the halo curriculum and how to teach that program in your preschool classrooms and then the second part i'll pass things off to my colleague beth lynch with minus nine to five and she'll review um, the basics which are some really cool and useful principles to help promote, you know, love and caring and growth within um, for your preschool children um, and your little ones both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. So I think you'll really enjoy what she has to say. Um, but for now, I'll dive into Halo. Um, and so I'll get started by answering the question, what is Halo? HALO is an acronym that stands for Healthy Alternatives for Little Ones, and it is a unique and age-appropriate health education program for preschoolers, so for children between the ages of three and six years old. HALO was created by the Heartland Family Service in 1991 uh, after their staff overheard children in their daycare center talk about the drinking games that they were playing with their families not good. Um, and so the program is built on the fact that preschool is the perfect time for children to learn positive life skills. So the staff reason that if children can learn negative behaviors like drinking games, they can also learn really positive healthy behaviors like not playing drinking games and doing things that are healthier for their bodies. Um, and so three years ago, we here at Cinch received a grant from the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth to teach HALO um, in preschool classrooms across Hampton Roads from 2018 until 2021. And just as Sarah mentioned, we are so proud to say um, that we have won uh, continued funding to teach HALO for another three years from 2021 until 2024. Um, and our goal is to be able to bring HALO to different classrooms, um, even more classrooms across Hampton Roads in a variety of ways. Um, and so before we were teaching in person, um, pretty much solely. And during the pandemic, we sort of transitioned to teaching online as well. And so that is this program, um, the HALO program online, and this, this is just a continuation of it. Um, and so we're really happy to have you here with us. Um, so I know the Family Heartland Institute says that HALO is a health promotion curriculum, but we at Cinch really like to say that HALO is really a social, emotional curriculum for preschoolers um, with a lot of evidence backing it. And by this, I mean that HALO helps children to learn not only um, uh, social skills, but also cognitive and emotional skills. And so HALO teaches children about their identity and their sense of self and their emotions and how to recognize those emotions. So, you know, those are the emotional social skills, but it also teaches them cognitive skills like about their body organs. They learn a lot of factual information. So HALO is good, not just because it teaches children, you know, general information, but because it teaches to the whole child. Um, and so we believe that there are so many benefits to teaching HALO in your classroom. Um, part of, you know, the, the motto of HALO and also what is included in the HALO song that we sing to children in the lessons is that HALO will help the children to grow bigger, stronger, and better able to think. Um, and it does this by doing exactly what I said, teaching social and emotional um, skills to them so that when they get in, uh, into hard and difficult situations, they can build up resiliency to stressful situations. Um, it builds their self-confidence uh, and so that if they are faced with difficulties later on in life, they're less likely to abuse 
um, tobacco and other substances, right? And they're more likely to choose healthier alternatives as outlets of those stress. Um, and so we believe that HALO, um, in, by teaching the children why certain things are important um, and why certain things are healthier and the reasons behind them, um, it helps to build up their knowledge and their confidence so that they can make these healthy choices now and in the future. Okay, so the HALO program is pretty much structured in a really simple format. Um, we believe in not just telling you that your students will learn a lot in HALO, we believe in showing you just how much they learn. To do this, we have um, a, a test that we give the children before they learn HALO and after they learn HALO. Um, this test is called the Bonita Bunny Assessment. Um, so in the in the beginning, before they learn HALO, they have the Bonita Bunny pre-assessment or the pre-test. They do that. And once you do that, you are all clear to start teaching your HALO lessons. And so um, you can teach a lesson once a week. Uh, there are 12 lessons in total. So that will take you on a 12-week schedule. Or you can teach it twice a week. And that's a sort of a six-week schedule. Um, but after you teach the lessons, you take that test one more time to figure out how much information students have really learned. Um, and that is pretty much the HALO portion, you know, of just that, the, the program structure. And we like at Cinch to tack on an added benefit for the children, which is um, we encourage you all as preschool centers um, to adopt a tobacco-free policy. Um, and by this, we mean that it's beneficial for children to, to learn and to grow in an environment that is smoke and vape free. Um, we believe in not only teaching children how to make healthy choices and why they're healthy, but we believe we should model it as well. And so we know, understand that different centers will be in different places, but we encourage you to work towards, um, you know, having this smoke-free policy implemented to help the children learn and grow in a really healthy way. Um, and even if it's not a center, we know we have some people joining us who you know, are interested in teaching their children. We have smoke and vape free car pledges um, so that parents can sort of work towards the goal of eventually driving uh, in a car without any secondhand smoke exposure um, for their children. So, you know, there's opportunities both as a center and as just a family unit to try and live a healthier life as a model for your preschoolers. Okay, so I'm gonna to touch on the Benin Bunny assessments just a little bit more so there's no confusion. Um, so like I said, the, the pre-test and the post-test that we give students um, before and after they learn HALO is called the Benita Bunny Assessment. And it is a really cute story. Um, you can see on the slide here that there are all these cute little animals and uh, the Benita Bunny Assessment follows a story of a bunny named Benita. You can see the bunny on the screen um, as she goes throughout her, just a, a few, like a day in her life. And she has a lot of choices that she has to make and the students need to help her. So, you know, the you would read the story to the the child and then pause for their answers. And that is essentially the assessment. Then the story covers all of the topic areas of HALO. And now with this program, the HALO online program, you have two options to do your Bonita Bunny assessment. You can um, do an individual assessment, which is when um, you know, a teacher or an aide would just pull a child aside um, while class is going on or while centers are happening and read the story to the child, record their answers on a sheet that we have provided. Um, and then just do that with all the students in your classroom, You know, those who are between the ages of three and six. If you say, I don't have time for that, we completely understand and we've created a group assessment, which is just a group test. So you would read that story to your entire classroom, mark their answers down on a sheet. And when you're done with that, you'll send them to us via email and we'll compose and crunch all of the numbers so that you can see just how well your students are doing, you know, before they learn HALO compared to afterwards. So we'll do the hard part for you. But those are your options when it comes to the Benita Bunny assessment. And if you are a parent just seeking to do it with your children, we have a completely online option where all you have to do is um, well, the, there's a survey online and the video plays of the story and you just pause to record your uh, child's answers by clicking a button and uh, press submit when you're done. And there will be rewards options for, for those who are able to complete it um, as a family unit as well. Okay, 
And so now we're going to move into the HALO lessons, which is the bulk of this program. Um, so HALO is broken down into 12 lessons in total. Um, if you teach them yourself, it'll take you about 30 minutes to get through the lessons. But with this program, you have the option of um, just playing a video of a pre-recorded lesson um, in which I, myself or other staff members, Sarah and some volunteers, are teaching essentially the HALO lesson to your child. And so all you have to do is click play um, and then pause whenever the children need some help or you wanna explain something further or if you're pausing to do an activity, it makes it really easy to do sort of an on, like a combination uh, of, of both, to teach the lessons in person when you have time or to let us teach it to your children if you have you know, TV or video capabilities. Um, and then there are activities that accompany each of the lessons as well um, that are all available on our website. So I'll just give a, a overview of the HALO lessons. We like to say that the lessons are organized into sort of five main um, content categories. Um, the first three lessons are really about self-esteem and identity and self-concept. Um, the next three lessons are about recognizing emotions and so social emotional competence and understanding. And then the like the middle three lessons are about the teaching the children about their body organs and why drugs like tobacco and alcohol and other really harsh substances, um, you know, cocaine and heroin. Um, and medicine that they just find lying around, like all of those things are dangerous and harmful to their bodies. And sort of also the difference between medicine that your parent will give you versus medicine that, you know, they find lying around. Lesson 10 is all about resilience. It's our stress and relaxation lesson. And then the last two lessons are about healthy lifestyle. So healthy eating and physical activity. And I can break it down just a little further so you're familiar before you decide to dive in by teaching this with your classrooms or passing the information along to your teachers. Um, so like I said, lessons one through three are all about self-esteem and identity. The first lesson is titled, I am special, and it teaches children that they are unique and lovable and special while also being similar to other people. And it helps to uh, really have a foundation for HALO. We have a lot of difficult conversations in HALO with students and it helps if the student can understand that they themselves can make decisions. Um, and so we start with that lesson, we do a cute activity where they get to draw a portrait of their face. Um, we love coloring in HALO. And the second lesson is all about things that children can do. It's titled, I can. Um, and you know, it's really empowering to see, to listen to the things that children like to do and say that they can do. Um, and so we have an activity where children can sort of color on a page again. <laughs> um, there are images of some children doing different things, like some child is brushing his teeth and another girl is flying a kite. And, you know, we provide those, um, you know, uh, uh, pages, um, those templates for you, and you can just sort of print them out, write the child's name, let them color, and then staple them all together, and it's a little booklet of all the things the children in your class can do. So Johnny can wash his hands, and Alyssa can fly her kite or make her bed, and the children love to see it, and so sometimes, you know, we'll make this booklet and just come back to it you know, in later times uh, throughout the curriculum. And lesson three is about families and children learn that um, families can come in a variety of shapes and sizes and, and types. So it's really an introduction to diversity for them and that families are joined together by love. Um, and that these are like the foundation principles of HALO when we start to talk about more difficult concepts. Um, lessons four through six, like I said, are about emotional, social skills. Oh, and lesson four is about communication. And when I tell you we revisit this lesson almost every single hail, as soon we literally like wait to get to lesson four to say, oh, I can't wait until we can talk about communication because it's the foundation of how we can actually teach the students. And so um, the main takeaway for the communication lesson is that we like to say it takes two people to communicate, one person to talk and then another person to listen. 
and we have the children do the sign with us. Um, and it is really, really helpful, especially when, you know, I'm talking and trying to teach, but a child won't listen. And I just remind them, it's like, Tommy, do you remember what we said about communication? And he's begrudgingly says yes. And then we go through the sign so he can remember. And sometimes if I need them to be quiet, I'll just put up the sign for listen. And, you know, depending on the age of the classroom, it works really well and they understand that you know, talk, communication is about taking turns. Um, so we really emphasize that lesson and practice it thoroughly and we, we bring it up in future lessons. And lessons five and six are all about feelings <laughs> and the children love to talk about their feelings. You know, we do a lot of reinforcement activities with them on this, not just in the teaching, but also in our activities. We have, you know, little um, feeling plates where you can hold up an emotion, they get to, tell you what that emotion is and then and building on that in lesson six. Um, so lesson five is about identifying the emotion. Lesson six is about ways to actually healthily address those emotions. You know, what do you do if you're angry? What's a healthy way to deal with your anger? What's a healthy way to deal with your sadness? Um, and so these are really useful um, in helping to make sure children can, you know, actually understand um, how to communicate and identify their emotions so we can learn together. Okay, lesson seven and eight about making healthy choices. Um, and we help them understand healthy choices by teaching them about their body organs first. So they learn about their heart and their brain and their lungs and their liver and their stomach. It's all a part of the curriculum. Um, and they use this cute little body apron uh, to learn about it where you can Velcro the organs into place. If you put the apron on the child, they love it. <laughs> and we use that as a foundation so that we can explain to them why tobacco is harmful. You know, tobacco can really hurt your lungs, especially as children, and why alcohol can be so harmful, what it can do to your liver, what it can do to your heart. Um, and then building on that in lesson nine, they learn the difference between certain kinds of medicines and when it's okay to take medicine and when it's not okay. You know, it's not okay if someone that's not your parent or your teacher or your doctor gives it to you, right? If you just find it. Um, and that's really helpful. And then, like I said, lesson 10 is all about stress and relaxation. It's our resilience curriculum. We really take the time to um, help the children understand and stress. And so we like to say, you know, stress is when your like, body is really, really tight. But you know, you can always uh, let go of your stress by just taking a deep breath. We like to tell the children they can smell the flowers in, that's a breathing in, and then blow out the candle. And that's how they breathe out. Um, if you watch the video lessons, you'll see us do it often. Uh, but it's really helpful um, to frame it in that way. And we have some activities like yoga that we do with the children. And then lessons 11 and 12 are all about healthy lifestyle. So healthy eating and physical activity. And I will pause and say, you know, don't be surprised if you do end up teaching a halo to your students when you get to the healthy eating uh, lessons. We've had some teachers say, you know, my students were telling me that my Snickers for lunch was not as healthy <laughs> as, you know, the apple that they had in their lunch. And so, you know, and Ms. Anderson needs to do better is what they would say. But, you know, the children, it just shows that the children are listening and they really are valuing and taking in what we're teaching in Halo. Um, so don't say I didn't warn you, but it is, it is quite cute in my opinion. Um, and so that is it. That is pretty much other, our Halo lessons from 1 through 12. Um, now that you know what the lessons teach, I'm sure you're wondering, well, how am I supposed to teach this? Well, the Halo, we have a sort of formula for how we teach the lessons to help you get through everything in a fun, quick, and organized way. So the lessons are structured with five main points. We do a halo introduction, um, which is when we, you know, gather the children around and say it's time to learn halo, um, and we sing our halo song, and then we move into talk time, which is like the bulk of the lesson. Um, number three is activities. That's what you do after you sort of taught, you know, that didactically what that lesson is. And then there's a, another activity with healthy and harmful cards, and then you sort of wrap everything up. And I'll explain what I mean. Um, so like I said, for the HALO introduction, it's how we kick off the HALO lesson. Um, we like to remind the children what HALO means and that healthy is just, just means it helps to learn, it helps them to grow bigger, stronger, and better able to think. And alternatives means choices. 
and the little ones are the children it's for them so it's just teaching them how to make uh, how to grow bigger stronger and better able to think by making healthy choices and so we like to repeat sort of what halo is for them and then after the reminder we sing the halo song and i did want to provide an example of what the halo song looks like and i'm going to use just a video um a clip of a video that's online hi my friends it's time for us to learn halo let's get ready to sing nice and loud it's here we can't see it oh thank you beth i'm sorry i realized my sharing. Yeah, share new screen. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna pause that sharing. Okay, are we good? Can you see now? Yeah, okay. Yes. Open our ears really, really wide. Okay. Let's get ready to sing. Healthy makes us bigger, healthy makes us stronger, healthy makes us better, able to think. Healthy makes us bigger, healthy makes us stronger, healthy makes us better, able to think. Good job singing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's always embarrassing to see uh, myself on screen. So thank you for <laughs> suffering through that with me. Um, but I just wanted to give an example um, of what it looks like to sing the Halo song, um, sort of the energy that we bring. And like I said, if you choose to play the videos, it's all there for you. Um, and I will share these slides with everyone, but we've linked the music. Like if you just want to, the background music, it's available here um, and everything, again, is always available on our website as well. Okay. okay, so moving into talk time, like I said, sort of the bulk of the HALO lesson, whereas the introduction only takes you about a minute or two to get through, um, depending on how many times you sing the HALO song. Sometimes I've had students ask me to sing it three times back to back, so <laughs> just a fair warning, but the talk time is really where you spend most of the time teaching the HALO lesson. And so um, we have here an example of Sarah teaching a class um, and, you know, we encourage you to use your bodies as much as possible, um, you know, to make it engaging and fun. And we recommend 10 to 15 minutes for this portion of um, the HALO lesson structure. Um, and then we have activities um, that comes after the talk time. And so after you sort of get the students engaged and learning the material, um, we've provided some really low uh, material, low maintenance um, activities that you can do with your classrooms um, and a bunch of different options. Like I said, available on our website or on our Google Drive for you. Um, and then this portion, the healthy harmful cards is what you do after your activity. So your activity could be coloring, it could be like a hokey pokey, or it could be Simon Says. Healthy harmful cards is where you really um, reinforce what they're learning through Halo. So Halo gives you uh, cards um, that, that are mixed between different um, foods, activities, substances, um, scenarios, and some of them are healthy and some of them are harmful for your body. Um, and so what you'll do is hold up the card and the children will have to tell you if it's healthy um, or if it's harmful. And, you know, you want to choose a mix of cards. You don't have to do the whole deck. That will take a long time. We recommend, you know, five to six cards at a time um, and explain, help it to be a learning opportunity for the children. Explain to them, you know, why milk is healthier than beer or alcohol, like you can see here in this image. Um, and it helps to remind the children that just because they like something doesn't mean that it's healthy for their bodies all the time. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then the wrap up is like it says, you just wrap everything up. Um, we like to uh, do a quick summary of the lesson. And so for example, if it was a lesson about communication, you would ask them again, what does communication mean? And they would do the different signs and you would go over it again. And then you just sing your halo song to close on out. And it is as simple as that. 
Um, and all the HALO materials will be provided to you right before you begin teaching HALO. Um, and so this is specifically for the preschool centers that are ready to teach HALO. You will get a little kit for each classroom uh, that you expect to teach HALO. Um, for parents at home, we're still working on you know, what that could look like, but we do have giveaways for individual families. And so um, some of those giveaways, you know, with the Amazon gift cards, you could use it towards buying particular um, goods and gifts and things like that to help with props for teaching the lesson if you want. Okay, and so you find all of your HALO information in two places, um, on our website or, or on our Google Drive. Um, and I'll share the slides so that you can have both of them um, and they'll both be hyperlinked for you. Okay, and so just to wrap up my portion, I wanna give you a couple of tips on how to talk with parents and children about difficult content matter in Halo. Um, sometimes we've had children say that they love, love chips and cookies and ice cream and candy. So what do you mean it's not healthy? You know, it, it, uh, we've had instances where it took, you know, up until the middle of the curriculum to convince some students that those things are not as healthy for your bodies. Um, and that, you know, it's okay to have these things, you know, just a little bit of these things, but it's not okay to eat these things all the time, every single day. You know, what happens to your stomach if you only eat cookies? And then they start to understand, oh, my stomach would hurt if I only ever ate cookies. And so, you know, just framing it in that way can be helpful. Um, it's a little more difficult when they say, you know, that my mom or my dad, they smoke or they drink, so that has to be good for you. And, you know, we encourage you to have patience with them um, in, when explaining to them that just because an adult does something doesn't mean that it's right, doesn't mean that it's the healthiest thing for their bodies, and especially doesn't mean that it's healthy for children to do, right? And so, we like to use what we're learning in the HALO lesson to reinforce that in a kind and healthy way. Um, you know, in a couple of years ago, we had, you know, uh, conversations about, you know, in the, in the healthy harmful cards, a gun would appear. And so some students had, you know, some troubling um, responses to it. And we've had to you know, debrief and talk more about what that means. They were worried about active shooters. And so, you know, different things, maybe different sticking points as you teach HALO, but we just encourage you to take your time and to, to have patience with the children, to know that as you continue to teach these things, that the lesson and the materials will stick. And the same with parents, you know, if talking with parents about tobacco, if you decide to move to adopt that tobacco-free policy. It, it can be difficult sometimes, um, but we encourage you to be kind. We can provide cessation materials um, and you know some smoke-free materials for, for parents. Um, and even some staff members, it may be difficult. Um, and that's okay. You know, we all take our time in understanding um, what to do for our bodies and, and health. And just because we know that something is healthier doesn't mean that it's easy to make that switch or transition. We understand that. And so we're here to help you in any way that you would like or need. And we found that it's really helpful to let parents and staff members know that it's never too late to quit using tobacco. And so we provided this sort of graphic to show that the benefits to, to stopping, you know, vaping or smoking are almost immediate to, to, to the body. And that the longer you go, you know, if you are a smoker, the longer you go after you have quit, like the longer period you have where you are, um, you know, have stopped smoking, like the healthier your body becomes and the, the, the stronger and the better it is for it. Um, and so we found that to be really helpful. And that's why we've included it in this slide for you as well. And that is it. That has wrapped up and concluded the HALO teacher training. We've condensed it down for you all. That is the quick and dirty. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know that the next steps are really just up to you to decide, um, you know, let us know your thoughts. Are you interested in teaching HALO in the summer, the fall, or spring of next year? Um, as soon as you are ready to teach HALO, like I said, we will send you your HALO kit um, so that you can go ahead and get started. I'll put a link in the chat box um, to a short little survey that just collects that information. Um, and we can go ahead and, uh, you know, get the ball rolling on this. It sounds great. And I do have a little 
um, I do have a little quiz. Oh, let me accept my share. Okay. I'll put that link in the chat box for everyone, but I would love to take a little poll if you all will bear with me on that. Um, I'm interested in knowing how many of you are interested in teaching Halo in your classroom. So I'll launch the poll and just give us a second to get through it. Um, and then I'll pass things off to Beth to talk about um, the basics uh, it, and check in with you all to see if you have any questions after we do the poll. Okay. I will be right back. I have a children shouting oh, that yes. the show turned off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go, go. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we have, oh, okay. And I believe if we could get one more person, I'll give it just another second. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It looks like we have some yeah, definite yeses and some maybe. So, and that is totally fine. You can decide to teach it whenever you are ready. Just let us know and we'll work with you <clears throat> to get that done. Okay. Okay. And I'll share the results so you can see. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> and while Beth is Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And I wanted to say, does anyone have any questions about the halo portion? We have just a few minutes to answer any questions that you may have or concerns. Hi, Tiara. This is Jerome. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I, uh, I sent you a uh, chat directly about the uh, interest because I didn't want to bombard it with these. Uh, um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, Stock you off, obviously. Um, I'm not sure if I spend you well, but, but I'm, I'm very interested to, to help out as much as I can if we can talk off some other time to figure sure. it out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't see the chat box while I was sharing my screen, but absolutely. I'll follow up with you directly. Thank you. You're most welcome. Hi, Tiara. This is Orda. I just want to say I'm excited about um, starting the program in the fall, so I'm really looking forward to it. So it's it's excellent. Everything that you've presented is an ex is excellent. So I'm just excited. <laughs> so thank you all for making it available to us. Oh yes, ma'am. We are excited that you are excited, and so you know I'll be in communication with you um, to prepare and get everything together. I, I'm glad. Thank you for letting me know. You're so welcome. Thank you again. Okay. All right. Well, I will go ahead um, and pass things off to Beth. If there are any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, all right, Beth, now give me one second so I can pull up your presentation. I will introduce myself while Tira is getting the presentation pulled up. Hey everyone, my name is Beth Lynch. I am a mother of two little ones who are four and two years old. They are home with me this week as one of my children was exposed to a COVID positive case in daycare. So if they come wandering in, that is the reason why. Um, and I am the office assistant at EMS minus nine to five. And um, I am excited to be here to share the basics with you all today. You can go to the next slide, please. So you may be wondering why the basics, what are the basics? And just a very quick synopsis is to say that the basics are easy ways to connect with little ones to boost their brain growth. Practicing the basics as a child care worker or a facility allows you to frame what is important to help 
babies and toddlers thrive. Now the basics is primarily directed um, at zero to three years old, but um, they are currently working on expanding that up to five years old um, in terms of their official training materials. Um, but I find it applicable to children up to the teen years when you learn about those principles. So if you can go to the next slide and launch the video, Tira, we're going to share a sweet little three or four minute video that will get you smiling and inspired with the basics principles. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Learning begins the moment your child is born. Baby, baby, baby. Do you want to play too? Every child is filled with vast potential for success in life. <laughs> and those first three years can have the greatest impact on your child's learning. Push this. And then they all spin. Ooh. Wow, awesome job. It's all about giving a child a proper start. That's what being a parent is all about. I wanted to make sure that I was here every day. Such a joy. Every parent of every background can make a positive difference in their child's life. A few simple everyday activities can make a big difference. That's why The Basics is working with research and community leaders to promote an important new initiative. Two, good job, three. The Basics are five simple principles that we want everyone to know. The first of The Basics is to maximize love and manage stress. The second is to talk, sing, and point. Let's take the back. The third is to count, group, and compare. One, two, three. The fourth is to encourage and enable movement in space and play. And the fifth is to read, but not just to read. We want to read and discuss stories. Whoa, what is that? What does the duck sound like? These are the five fun and simple things that every parent can do beginning from birth. Let's all work together to make sure our children can become the best, most well-prepared they can possibly be. Maximize love. And manage stress. Talk, sing, and point. Count, group, y compare. Explore through movement and play read and discuss stories. Please join us and help spread the word. So I don't know about all of you, but that little video gives me all of the feelings. I love seeing the daddy smooching on those little chubby baby cheeks. So sweet. Okay. So as you saw in the video, the basics are those five simple principles that are fun and they are powerful in boosting brain development in those early years, setting children up for success. They uh, encompass most of what experts say is important for development in those first few years, 
And uh, I'm sure that as you watched the video, you recognize that you are already doing the basics with the kids in your care. We are just here to reinforce those behaviors and give reminders of how important it is to practice them daily. The basics are free. They don't require any kind of fancy toys and they don't take you any extra time. It's about how families and daycare, childcare providers and preschools um, incorporate them into all the things that you're already doing into your daily routines. For example, um, my children both started hating being changed on the diaper, uh, on the changing table, change their diapers there when they were about 10 months old. And so I said, I've got to spice this up. What can I do? And at least for my daughter, singing the itsy bitsy spider got her distracted, but we were also practicing one of these principles, right? We were singing and it got us through what we had to do anyways. She had to have her diaper changed no matter what, but we found a way to make it fun for her rather than her rolling off the side dangerously. Um, let's see, where was I? Um, there are also videos that you can watch at the basicshr.org and we'll get those links in the chat box for you um, for each of those principles. And they're only about three to four minutes long a piece. So I definitely recommend checking them out, if nothing else, just to see those cute babies and toddlers. Um, we also have tip sheets along with all of our other resources that are in a base camp that is clickable Dropbox set that you can access through our website, thebasicshr.org. And you can print, view, get ideas there. And I'll show you a little bit more about that at the end of the PowerPoint presentation. Next slide, please. So my thought was that the HALO lessons really directly play into the maximize love and manage stress principle. When I looked at the HALO curriculum, that's what really stood out to me. And we know what a profound impact that stress can have to our physical bodies. Let's keep everybody healthy by committing to maximizing love and minimizing stress. Small children thrive when their world feels loving and safe and predictable. When you as their care provider or teacher show them love and respond to their needs, they learn that they can count on you. And when they feel secure in that relationship, it gives them the confidence to explore their surroundings and cope with challenges, similar to what Tira touched on earlier. And there is a phrase that comes to mind that I have come across in doing my own parenting. And it says that a Dysregulated child, a uh, dysregulated adult cannot regulate a dysregulated child. So that is uh, something that really speaks to me as a parent that I need to manage my stress too. It's not just for the kids, it's for adults and children because they are looking to us as their parents and caregivers, teachers to model the behavior that is expected. So if we yell when we are angry, how can we expect children um, who look up to us to react when they're angry? They're gonna yell too if that's what they see us doing. So ways that, that we can manage our stress and maximize the love is sharing a hug just because. If you are in an immediate moment of stress, name your emotion. 
I'm feeling angry right now. It's not something that you have to say out loud. Um, but as an adult, if you just say, okay, I feel my blood pressure rising a little bit. I am feeling angry. Sometimes just that recognition is enough to say, all right, let me take it back a step. Um, and then this is the next bullet point on the slide is something that I use personally as um, a parent is that this quote as kind of a mantra, treat a child as though they are already capable of the person that they are capable of becoming. So that kind of speaks to if it, you uh, treat a child as though they are bad or naughty, they're going to continue with that naughty behavior. But if we uh, shower them with love and kindness, even when they're having difficult behavior, you can expect to start see that turning around a little bit. I noticed that with my son who is four. Um, so I would love to do a little poll with you all to see what your favorite way to manage your own stress is when you are at work in a child care preschool setting. If you feel that this is an area that maybe you need to work on, maybe select the option that you would like to try out the next time you feel your blood pressure rising. We'll give everyone just a moment to vote on what they either already like to use um, to manage their own stress in a heated moment or something that they would like to start incorporating. Terry, I'm not sure if you see it. The percentage of people who have responded. I do. I see six out of eight so far. Okay. Give it just another minute and then we'll take a look at your responses. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone has responded. So I'll All right. In the poll and share the results. Okay. So our highest result is counting to 10 before reacting. That gives us a good few seconds to think about the way that we are going to respond to stress. So thank you all for sharing that. Let's go to the next slide. Um, exploring through movement and play, I thought was directly relatable to many of the HALO lessons as well. Um, it's integral to the HALO program for being healthy. Children benefit from spending time playing with others and some time playing alone, figuring things out independently with you as the caretaker nearby. Help them build on their interests and see where their curiosity takes them. So I'm sure as daycare providers, you love to get your kids outside. That's when you see them probably at their happiest. I know my children both love getting outside let them explore and linger on what catches their interest, like a pile of dirt or a line of marching ants. It can be something as simple as that and strike up a conversation about it. Other ways that we can explore through movement and play are dancing along to songs that are slow, fast, talk about the difference in those tempos and how we move our bodies a little bit differently depending on what that music sounds like. Um, you can also provide a safe place for them to play tag or do hide and seek. That's a, a fun kind of problem solving way to get moving. And while playgrounds are also, of course, excellent for movement and play, but the outdoors offer, has so much more to offer. Like I said, my kids love to go outside and just dig in the dirt, look at the bugs, pour water into the dirt and see how it changes and makes that into mud. Okay, next slide, please. So here you see the ultimate goal of the basics is a socio-ecological saturation. In English, that means that over time, maybe in a generation, 
everyone just knows the basics principles and uses them when interacting with babies and young children. But like I said earlier, you're already doing so many of these things, it's just putting a name to it. Um, but if this graphic were designed by me, it would be an upside down triangle shape with the child and caregiver at the top and then you, our early care educators would be directly under that. And that is because you have the next direct impact on the children's development. And what you do every day is so important for little ones. And I applaud you for the excellent work that you do, helping to shape the lives of children. They are our future. And because of, as we learned today, your dedication to caring and teaching small children does have a clear and significant impact for the rest of their lives. So thank you so much for what you do day in and day out as a, a child care providers. Um, next slide, please. Next steps, uh, you can please visit our website, thebasicshr.org. There you can find the easy access to our resources. Please follow us on Instagram. Uh, our handle is the basics HR. Check us out, follow, share our posts. Um, we are posting things, little tips and tricks and reminders on um, how to just incorporate the basics into those everyday routines and activities. Also, if you would like additional training on the basics or posters for your child care center, I'm your girl. Please contact me. Again, my name is Beth Lynch and my email address is lynchb at edms.edu. So that is it for my presentation. And I did just want to um, let you all know if you have any friends or family who are interested in getting into child care as well, um, there is a training coming up. Let me make this big so you all can see it. Um, we have a Hampton Roads Child Care Training Program. There is a $200 bonus if you stay employed at a child care center for at least 30 days after the training. It's a week long training and it is free. I'll share the link to register for it. It is June 28th through July 2nd. So please share with your family and friends who are looking to get into a child care for a career. And I wanna thank you all for your time and again, for the important work that you do caring for children all day, every day. You are warriors. All right, appreciate it. Thank you all so very much. And I look forward to hearing and staying in touch um, and speaking with you soon. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.